So they will also ask you about how do you engage with parents to ensure they are involved in the learning process. So they are big on this. Do you call home? Do you um, make sure that you contact the parents when the students are misbehaving and also when the students are doing well in school? Make sure that you also do a positive call. You may, you may spend most of your day with students, right? But building relationships with parents is equally important. And the interviewer wants to see how you've done this in the past, correct? So do you keep contact information of the parents or the guardians? So when parents are involved, students are more likely to have academic success because someone is guiding them at home. So when they're not in your classroom, the parent is still involved and make sure that you have a good relationship with the parents, right? Because they will help you remind the students of the purpose where they're going to school. They will help you remind the students to do their assignments, to behave in class. So you will have better behavior from your students if the the parents are involved and they're, you know, happily doing it with you because you have a good relationship with the parents. So as you answer this question, think about what strategies you've used in the past or you are using that allows your uh, relationship with the parents to be, you know, really there is strong. And because of that, someone is helping you with the behavior of the, the students. Uh, here are some talking points that you can, you know, discuss or consider to discuss when you're asked about this. Maybe do you invite parents to volunteer in classroom or in field trips? That's something that you practice in your school. Do you inform your parents about school-related activities through, say, emails or texts? If you're allowed in your school, do you have like a Facebook page that you're allowed to use officially so that the parents can see your activities in school? Or maybe do you have like Google Classroom where, where parents could access them? Do you have this? So if parents could access your Google, just an observer, you know, they're not allowed to edit anything. They're not allowed to make comments. Just as an observer, if you're posting photos there, the teachers could, that mean the parents could see them. It's a good way to also involve them, right? Do you have like a monthly newsletter? Okay, this could be a lot, but you know, I'm just giving you some points that, you know, you may consider. Okay, maybe you're doing this already. You just forgot to mention this during the interview. Do you provide parents with resource materials? Do you like give the handout to the kids to give to their parents? So these are some of the ways for you to involve the parents. So how do you ensure equality and inclusion in your class okay very important very American question okay inclusivity equality equity so read about these things okay so inclusion equality strategies would include how do you uh, create your lessons so that those who are slow who may have learning disabilities can still enjoy your class can still feel okay I'm part of this class my teacher cares for me. How do you plan your lesson? If you have students who have reading um, uh, disability, for instance. So, for instance, in your school, do you have, like, a list of accommodations per student? Because in the U.S., it's actually a legal document. So, you have access if you have a student with some accommodations. So, learn that term. Accommodations for students with learning disabilities, for instance, or they could have allergies. Make sure that you know those. As a teacher, do you keep track of these things for your students and based on these things that you know about your students? So I have a student who doesn't speak English well, for instance. I have a student who is not reading on the grade level that he should be reading. I have a student who is dyslexic. I have a student who is, for instance, undernourished. I have a student who is having an eye problem, could not read well, sitting from the back. So how did you make arrangement in the classroom? Did you make a special seating arrangement? Uh, do you make your visual so that it's big enough for students who may have visual impairment, for instance? So that's inclusivity. Okay, you might start by sharing how you created lesson plans to accommodate all styles of learning, right? For those who are visuals, those who are tactile, those who, you know, we know these things already. 
Again, don't discuss about learning styles. Go directly to how you make sure that you are able to accommodate the different learning styles in your classroom. And just make sure to be authentic. Don't, you know, invent things on the spot. If you're not doing them, then don't talk about them. Or you could mention that you've chosen books, for instance, and films that feature people with different ethnicities, genders, abilities, socioeconomic status, right? You can also describe how you've introduced activities that foster collaboration and cooperation among students. So, what collaborative activities are you using in class? When you try them, what did you observe? Okay, does it make the shy people really open up more? Something like that. All right, next question. What do you feel are current issues in education? What are the current issues in education? So make sure that you read about this online. Watch news. Okay, caution. It's very important that you're, you're, not, you're not racist. The field of education has evolved a lot over the last century as teachers, parents, and community members identify modern problems because the problems that we're having now, we don't used to have them before, right? <laughs> and look for solutions for them. The interviewer likely wants to know how you stay up to date on new issues or developments, showing a proactive engagement with the field of education. One of the top issues is equality and inclusion, like I said earlier. Our other potential issues will be like remote learning, mental health, school funding, school funding, I'm sure you are very familiar with it in the Philippines. <laughs> this is a very big issue. Teacher-student ratios, think about these things, bullying, right, poverty, social media. So as a teacher, uh, how did you um, respond to these things? What are your views about this? Like I said, if you apply as a teacher in the U.S., you will not be assigned to teach in schools that are grade A or B. You'll be assigned in schools that are Title I, that has a school grade of C or even maybe failing. That's why they're needing a lot of teachers because in good schools, they don't have you know as much challenge with teacher shortage because the local teachers will be flocking into those good schools. You will be teaching in schools where the students are from low-income families, where the students are, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, are asylum seekers, for instance, from Puerto Rico, from Haiti, from the Latin American countries. So how, what's your idea about this? So make sure to read about these things. They know, okay, this teacher is not ignorant about the issues. We will not have any problem with this teacher. Uh, she will not say something um, like ignorant or racist when she comes to our school or when he comes to our school. So make sure to read about this. Watch videos, okay?